Hey guys, you're with Backwoods Animation, and today I'm going to talk to you about 3D sets only using After Effects. So if you want to know more about how I built this set using only After Effects, um, click the link below to take my Skillshare class, where I dive deep into the belly of this beast and really explain to you my process step by step, how I set up the 3D using textures, different kind of lighting techniques, how to create lights, and doing some camera moves. So it's a very hands-on course, um, and it's very immersive. So if you want to learn more, please click the link below. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about different lighting effects. How did I achieve that really nice warm look to this, this shot using lighting? So let's get into it. In order to get lights, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go layer, new, whoops, layer new, and we're going to select light. The kind of light that we're going to get, or the kind of light we're going to start with, is going to be a parallel light. <clears throat> and our intensity, we could probably go to like 150. Let's see. Uh, and make sure cast shadows is selected, and shadow darkness is 100. Hit OK. And it's going to do some weird stuff. All right, so now what we can do is we're gonna move all this around to really get um, the effect that we want. So cast shadows is on. Something that I didn't, didn't talk about or explain um, because we're working working in 3D objects, it creates its own material options. So you want to make sure that everything that casts a shadow is casting a shadow. So this wall I don't think needs to cast a shadow. Um, but make sure that it can accept shadows and that it accepts lights. All right, and then we'll go to, oh, the reason we're not getting any lighting in here is because wall two, now why do I have two walls? Wall one, what we need to do, is we need to come into our material options and we need cast shadows turned on. And now you're gonna see it's starting to cast those shadows. Next, what we're gonna do is come to the ceiling. We want our ceiling to cast a shadow as well. Um, and these beams, we wanna make sure that they cast shadows as well. And another way that we can do this so that we don't have to keep going back and forth is just select material options, control C, and then on everything you wanna cast a shadow, just control V. Okay, and anything that has this rasterization check mark, this little star, if you go inside, as long as, as long as that option <clears throat> has been checked on the inside here, so it's casting shadows, it, it doesn't need to say it here. And in fact, it even turns off any geometry options for that layer. So it's reading only what you've set up on the inside here. So make sure it's turned on within that composition. And then we'll come here and we'll make sure that the door casts a shadow too. All right, is there anything else that we need to cast a shadow? I don't think so. So this lighting's looking pretty good. Um, I want this I want this to stretch a little bit more. So we'll come into the uh, transform options and we're going to adjust the point of interest. Just play around with this section um, until the lighting that you want 
is casting a shadow in the way that you desire. All right, that's looking pretty good. Next, what I'm going to do, right click new, light. I'm gonna create an ambient light. Your ambient light can be at maybe 20%. Click okay. And it's gonna lighten the entire scene. So now we're, be, we're able to see everything. Um, next, what we wanna do is we're gonna create a few spotlights for where these, um, these lights might be hitting. So right click new, we're gonna go light, and we'll do spot. The intensity of these can be, I don't know, maybe 40. Make sure cast shadows is on. And what we'll do is we'll pick this up to the ceiling. I'm gonna turn on my four views. <coughs> I'm gonna move this over the, over the lights, which are these four lines here. Okay, just like so. I'm gonna make sure that it's, it's raised high enough. Okay, so if this is my ceiling up here, you wanna make sure that it goes up to the ceiling. And then I'm gonna pull the, the light direction down. And I'll make sure that it's going kinda of in, towards, in towards my set. And maybe not quite that far in. We'll go like right there. All right, now I'll do one view and we'll adjust some of the settings for the spotlight. Let's turn this down to half. Cone angle, let's turn it up. I wanna see it on that wall. So the fact that I can't see it yet is kind of alarming. Let's, so let's see what's happening here. So what's going on to make it not show up on that wall? So I don't need it that intense. I don't need the cone angle that intense. Let's try my transform. So we'll pull this down. Pull it maybe out, I don't know. Let's go back to four views. Let's see what we're doing here. That's right, this is the front view. And this is the top view. Oh, there we go. We're getting a light over here now. Oh, I think because it's it's breaking through the ceiling, that's why. So you want to make sure it's not going through the ceiling. All right, so we'll pull it back here into the corner and don't let it go through the ceiling. There we go. All right, so now I'll go... Well, while I, while I got it, let's... Let's move this inward to hit right there in the back. All right, all that looks pretty good. So we'll go back to one view. Let's turn the intensity down to 40. Don't want it too intense. And let's change the cone angle inward a little bit. Let's look at the cone feather. We want it to be feathered a little bit. Let's have that come up the wall a little bit more. Feather it to like 30. 
All right, and once that light's looking pretty good, you can duplicate it and move it to the other side. Now let's see how this is looking. I'm gonna turn the intensity on this one up a little bit. Whoops, wrong one. All right, we'll go to like 65 or something like that. See how it does. All right, that's not too bad. Okay. So let's look at our, our original set to see some other things. So what are, what's going on here with the lighting? It looks like I have another light up here. So I have an ambient, a parallel, and then my two spotlights. And then I have another spotlight, which is shining on that wall to kind of fill in the rest. So this has an intensity of 100, cone angle of 85, and a cone feather of 46. So let's go ahead and create that light. So layer new, light, spot. So this had an intensity of 100, cone angle of 85, and we'll, that's fine, 50. All right, so then I'm gonna move this over and up. And I'm gonna pull this one across the room. So let's look at our four views to make sure that everything is kind of hitting where it needs to. So let's move this over a little bit. And we'll make sure that it is hitting, whoops. We'll make sure that it's hitting this wall. So this is my top view, let's look at a more of like a front view to make sure that's looking good. That looks pretty good. All right. So now let's look at it. Cool. So now we're starting to get some cool lighting happening. Okay. So finally, what you're looking at, you might be saying, well, how do we, how do we hide this, this, um, checkered background? The way that I, the way that I did it, um, if you have a picture, a picture would work just great. I kind of have an animated background already that goes along with this this set, so that's what I used. Um, so if I come back in here, it's called intro. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it, and then I'll move it over. So let me show you what's happening in this intro um, animation. So it's essentially a, a 19 by 20 set that I've already created. <clears throat> it's got some characters walking in it and it's got some background buildings and trees. If you have, fit, if you have footage, uh, video or a picture, that would work just fine. So all you do is import it into your set and then rotate it and push it past the wall. Okay, so that fills in our lighting just fine. But an another thing you have to make sure, because this will block your parallel light from entering the windows. So you have to make sure that it does not cast shadows, it does not accept shadows, and it does not accept lights. Once those are turned off, you're good to go. Finally, because I, I didn't want this to be a focal point at any point, I did a camera blur. So if you select your object, go effect, um, 
blur and sharpen, I did a camera lens blur. And I did it at 17. So turn your radius up until it looks good. Mine was at 17. And the next I did levels to make it brighter. So I added, I added, added the effect color correction levels. So once you get your levels, what I did was I crunched this inward to give more contrast, and then I pulled out the black. So I grabbed this black angle, triangle, and pulled it in. And so that just kind of whitewashes everything. All right. And so that is essentially all the lighting that we need. Um, it looks good, but now where it's gonna really shine and take off is when we start to adjust the effects. We're gonna do some color correcting and we're gonna add some glows to it to make it really pop and give it that warm sunset feel. So next what we need to do is we need to add something. So we're gonna go layer new, whoops. And we're gonna add an adjustment layer. This adjustment layer goes on top of everything. So it's a one-stop shop. You add one effect and it manipulates the whole image. Um, the reason that we do that is that we, so that we don't have to duplicate an effect across multiple assets. You just do it one place, makes it real simple. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add um, some curves. So come on down here to color correction and we're gonna go curves. This is where we can start to adjust some of the coloring. So I'm going to select red, and we'll start with red. And we'll add a little red to it. Start to warm it up. Then we'll go to green. Maybe we'll add a little green to it. And then we'll go to blue. And maybe we'll pull blue out. And that's looking okay. I don't, maybe, maybe the green will stay. All right, that's looking better. Okay, and then next we're gonna go RGB. And this is gonna be your lightness and your darkness. So it'll either pull your highlights way up and pull your shadows way down um, to really give that contrast, or you can just very subtly manipulate it so that it's um, giving it that nice pop of lighting that you're looking for. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, next, what we're going to try to do, and we can come back to this in a minute, and we'll affect it. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to stylize, and we're going to add a glow. So that glow, it might be a little too much. So let's try going down to zero, which blows everything out. And we'll increase this. And then let's see if we do like 0 0.01 for the intensity. It adds a nice little glow to it. It's very subtle. Uh, let's turn this down into the 20s and then maybe we'll do 0 0.02. <coughs> That's looking better. Okay. Um, I like it. I like where this is going. If we turn this up, what happens? Uh, I guess it turns it down. All right, so threshold we'll put to zero. Glow radius we'll put to 25. And your glow intensity we'll put to 0 0.2. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. And again, if you want to take my Skillshare class, click the link below where I talk more about how I built this set. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, feel free to like, comment, and ask questions.